Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, I put up a poll on what to do the next coming video on, which obviously is this video. And there were things like smoke grenades, um, the Marlin, a bunch of choices, including Connecticut Others. What were they? Where are they today? And where are we going? Overwhelmingly, it was like 79% of the people wanted to hear about the Connecticut Other. Fine. Uh, I have no problem doing that. In fact, on another channel, which I will not name, there is an actual complete breakdown of what is a Connecticut Other. And it's several years old because it was in the basic heyday of the Others. And uh, we know today that it's pretty much gone away. So, with that being said, let's get into it. First and foremost, the Connecticut Other is uniquely something to Connecticut, all right? Other states do have them, like New Jersey. Uh, New York had them for about five minutes, and then their state police and their local government said, we don't care, they're banned. So, short-lived in New York, and there's lawsuits going on with entities and so on and so forth. We're not even going to get into that, all right? Uh, I do know New Jersey has them. How do I know that? One of my buddies lives in Jersey. I feel really bad for him because uh, he is in New Jersey. That being said, when he, he told me uh, he bought a rifle, this, that, and the other thing, and when I was visiting him, he's like, yeah, here it is. He showed it to me. It literally is an other. So there you go. Hey, before we get too, too far into this video, and I know it's some riveting content, I just want to hit you guys up and let you know that, hey, Give me a like, a subscribe, hit the comments up below. It really does help with that algorithm, and we're always fighting YouTube when it comes to the content. Two, best way to support the channel is go buy some merch. Links are all down below. Also, Locals, Patreon, helps the channel out great. Now, the other part of the announcement is, if you have a permit in the state of Connecticut, and you can seal carry, how much practice have you really gotten deploying your concealed carry, your EDC? Like, how often do you lift clothes out of the way and draw to engage? Because 99% of the ranges around here, you're not able to do that. So, are you doing your dry fire reps at home? If not, boy, do I have some news for you. Connecticut Night Vision and Freedom Ballistics. Their next class that is coming up on the 13th of April is a concealed carry handgun class. There are still a few slots available. Details will be down in the description below, but sign up, take the class, and get some great training on concealed carrying with your EDC. That is what the point of the class is. This is not your defensive pistol. This is a basic Concealed carry, practical application of lifting up your shirt, drawing, and engaging. Everybody needs this training. If you carry, you don't dry fire, get your butt into this class, get down to the range, and have a blast the whole day. Rain or shine, the class is going on. All right, now, back to the All right, now, a little history on the other. So, the federal government had banned what they call assault weapons, which is a made-up term, all right, AR-15s, basically, and the like, AK-47, so on and so forth. So, the federal government had banned those, but it had basically a kill switch in it, right? It was going to run for a couple of years, and then it was going to fall off under Bush, and when they looked at it, they're like, okay, we'll re-implement it if we can see any discernible changes in murder rates, mass shootings, things like that. Everything that the AR was blamed for. When they looked at all the numbers, there was no change. Nothing made a difference. These guns being illegal, zero. So, they let it die, and they did not re-up it. And all of a sudden, the floodgates opened. AR-15s and their like were completely legal across the land. 
Then, of course, here in Connecticut, we had Sandy Hook, an absolute tragedy. All right, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Connecticut immediately responded with an assault weapons ban. All right, you had your pre-bans, and then it was cut off. Bam, no more. Fine. <clears throat> that platform is highly popular. I mean, it is the most popular platform in the United States. So some local manufacturers decided they were going to take the lower receiver and build out, cobble together parts, basically with changes in furniture, and create something new, something that has never been seen before. They sent it off to the ATF and they said, hey, categorize this. And they went over the criteria and they looked at it and said, okay, it's this. And then they took that information and sent it to SLFU. It said, hey, does this violate Connecticut laws? And they looked at it and they said, by our definitions, no. There you go. Perfectly legal. And they sold tons of them. All right. So let's talk about them. All right, I've got some variants here. They're on my little table, so I'll be grabbing them and all that. So we know basically what the other is. So we're not going to go into super details on it. Um, if, if you guys really need to do it, just Google it. You'll find the old video. All right, so we know that firearms like this, which is an SBR, all right, I SBR'd this with the ATF, all right, we understand you got your lower receiver, which is the controlled part of the gun, right here, and then the upper makes little to no difference in functionality, things of that nature, all right, this is an NFA item, uh, due to barrel length and all the other little things on it, all right, so, it is stamped multi-caliber, even though it's a 5.56, and that just comes down to the way Connecticut works. And the way the ATF works, because that lower receiver can be utilized for everything from 5.56 to 2.23 to 300 blackout. It's multi-caliber. You can use that one part to build out a bunch of different guns. All right? The Connecticut other is slightly different. It's got a vertical grip, and it's got a, a brace on the back. This is not a buttstock. It is a forearm brace. All right now, this is the mentality of how all this works. Again, this piece right here is the only part that's technically controlled by the ATF. So, the way it works is this is not a rifle because it's got a brace on the back. So, the ATF says, okay, it's not a rifle. Technically, you'd be like, okay, well, it's an AR pistol. You'd be wrong because it's got the vertical grip, so it's not an AR pistol. Other criteria that come into play. Under Connecticut law, any firearm that has a barrel length under 12 inches would be a pistol. These barrels are 12.000000, whatever. It's, it's over 12 even if it's by a little bit. All right, these barrels that I have are 12 fives, and you don't include the muzzle device unless your muzzle device is pinned and welded, which there are some variants of DLDs and, and other makers out there where the muzzle device is pinned and welded, and then that becomes part of the overall length of the barrel. None of mine are. So I measure just the barrel, which means I can swap this out for a three-prong, four-prong, you know, so basically a war comp or the uh, Lantec Dragon, which I have on the other one. Doesn't matter. All right. There we go. Um, the original versions had a featureless buffer tube, and it had a, the, the, the original brace um, that was just a sleeve of rubber, basically. 
Uh, it wasn't adjustable, none of that. Later versions like this, you can have it adjustable, all right? Because it is a brace. Now, if it were a buttstock, it would not be adjust. It would not be adjustable because in the state of Connecticut, you cannot have an adjustable buttstock unless it's a pre -ban. Well, you can't make this stuff up, all right? I mean, what, what is the difference between these, functionality-wise? Nothing. It's the same caliber. It's every, Everything on it is pretty much the same, except furniture, all right? That's it. That's, that's the only freaking difference. And somehow it magically makes it, oh, it's okay. We don't have a problem with it. Well, they did have a problem with it because it was a massive loophole. Uh, I freely admit that. Politicians understand that it was a loophole, but there was really nothing they could do about it because the way the law was written, it left it open, right, for this to exist. They've recently closed that. HB 6667 did away with others. Others are by definition, no longer a thing. All right, there's two parts to this. So the first part was the braces. The ATF themselves decided that they were going to regulate this brace because some people could put it on their shoulder. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not here to, to play semantics, right? I know damn well what people do with these. I don't care. I mean, you, you do what you do, right? Stabilize the firearm so you're safe. So the ATF decided they were going to regulate it. All right. They said any gun that has these is an SBR. So they opened up the portal. It was a free $200 tax stamp. You go on, you do your paperwork, file your form ones, and basically SBR these guns out. All right, both of mine are SBR'd. Then the courts put the stop to that. They put a stay. So it's not like the courts got rid of it and crushed it and said, yep, nope, that's unconstitutional, which it is. They said, we need to do a little more research and we need to have oral arguments and this and that. So originally it was just like the GOA uh, members of FPC, they had stays, but the rest of us people got shafted. And then one of the courts decided, no, nope, everybody gets a stay until we figure this out. Figure out if the ATF can or cannot regulate a piece of plastic. Because remember, the only part of this gun that they technically can do is that lower. The upper doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Optics don't matter. None of that stuff. All right, It's just that lower receiver. ATF, of course... Give them an inch, they're going to shoot your dog and take a mile. So, that's where that part of it is, all right? That is not a factor anymore. For those of you who did SBR, SBR your guns, I have no idea, okay? Is your paperwork any good? You got me. I have no idea. Like I said, it's tied up in the courts, so it's neither here nor there, all right? We'll pretend it doesn't exist. Sense plus... A mass amount of people just didn't comply. And, and good for you. All right? Then the state of Connecticut came in. And we all know what they did. They passed this massive gun law. All right? And they said that the Connecticut other is now an assault weapon. Which we all know is a made-up term. They can't even define it. But it's an assault weapon. So when you're registering your assault weapon, right? You're registering your other, which you technically have to do by law, which there's a whole video on that. I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, go watch it after you finish this video. Just rewind it and click that link. All right. So you register your assault weapon, and that's it, because what Connecticut did was, all they did was they changed the definition. So you had your pre-bans, which you didn't have to register because they were pre ban You got to register them. You've got your others, which 
didn't have to be registered because there were other, they have to be registered now. And they lump it all together into the assault weapon. All right. So the Connecticut other technically no longer exists because guns like that are are gone. They're they're just non existent anymore. All right. In the eyes of the law. All right. Now, one of the questions that just came up was when you're filling out your your form to register these in the portal. Nowhere does it ask you the barrel length. That's because the state of Connecticut doesn't care about your barrel length. All right, whatever your DPS3 says, that was at the time of purchase. Now, if for some reason you swapped your barrel out, that doesn't amount to a hill of beans. They, they don't care. When it does have a problem, or when it does get affected, is like if you have an SBR, all right, because you're telling the ATF the barrel length is this, and if for some reason you change the barrel length, you have to tell the ATF you've changed the barrel length. So if you burn your barrel out, but you put the same length barrel back on, doesn't matter. If you shorten the barrel or make it a little bit longer, still within the NFA category, you have to tell them. All right? And... NFA items, like, you technically you can't leave the state with them. You've got to tell the ATF when you do leave the state, if you're taking it for training or whatever. It's a whole new can of worms, all right? It's, it's a freaking headache. And for those of you out there that, that have those and you're lucky enough to have them here in the New England area, you know what I'm talking about. So if you swapped your barrel out for some reason, the state of Connecticut is not going to care, all right? When did people start doing this? Pretty simple. When the ATF originally came up with their crazy little brace game, um, they said it was mainly because barrels under the uh, length of 16 inches um, made it an SBR. Okay, so there were several things that you could do um, in the state of Connecticut. Okay, because it was, we all know it was a headache. I mean, you basically the ATF told you to do one thing, and you're like, well, I can't do that by state law. So it came down to, Basically, take the brace off if you didn't want to register your gun, right? Which is easy enough. You just take your brace off. I can't show you how to do that. YouTube, for some reason, me actuating a button and removing it is somehow I'm horrible, like the world's going to end. All right. But what a lot of people opted to do is that 16 inch barrel problem. What they did is they just put a bigger barrel on it, right? So this upper has a 20 inch barrel, it's got the OG carry handle on it, fixed iron sights and all that jazz. Um, not bad, all right? It's a bigger barrel. I prefer the shorter barrels, but if you're doing like competitive shooting, whatever, um, having a longer barrel for 5.56 five, is always better. The heavier the barrel, the longer the barrel, the better you're gonna be. You have better ballistic coefficient because that is what the round was made for. 20 inch barrel, blah, blah, blah. Now, I say Connecticut doesn't care about your barrel length. So you swapped it out, whatever. Um, when you're registering it in the portal, they don't ask you about that. And I don't care what your DPS3 is, what, what your DPS3 says. All right. So there, that answer is that. So a lot of people did just swap their barrel out or they removed the brace. Some people just complied and they have SBRs, all right? Now, the legality of of everything, I nobody, nobody knows, all right? This is where we are today. Because Connecticut pretty much did away with the other. And it is no longer a thing. It is now just categorized with everything else. Um, does that mean I can put a, a long, especially if I have a longer upper, if I have a longer barrel? Right, so if I have a 20 inch barrel, 18 inch barrel, what have you, you're saying it's an assault weapon. Fair enough. Does that mean I can put a buttstock on it? SLFU doesn't say anything. The law doesn't really explain any of that to you. They just lump all these guns into one category, which means you should be able to do this, but SLFU's answer basically, and I've said it before, is. Uh, when we arrest you, we'll let you know if it's illegal or not, which is 
thanks guys. I, I appreciate that. Really, you're not helping us out. All right. And I never um, recommend people call them to ask them questions because they don't know and they're not going to answer your questions. There's a whole video I did where SLFU sucks because I called with a simple question and I could not get a straight answer. I said, I, I, I got it. I can't talk to you. I need to talk to this person. I'm like, I understand that. However, all the people that are involved in this have no idea. And I'm asking for guidance so I can tell them. And they said, no, figure it out. I'm like, we, we can't figure it out. We don't know. I should have just not called. That being said. All right. So we know where we are today. If you have a longer bow, you can, you can do whatever it is you want to do. All right. I, I don't care. And I'm telling you right now, when you go to the range, if that range that you go to for some reason is asking to see your paperwork, uh, tell them to go piss on a flagpole. Uh, they have no legal authority. They have no ability and no enforcement on any of your crap. Okay. Now, they could tell you, hey, we don't allow that here. Fine, whatever. That's their prerogative. Fair enough. But for them to be like, hey, we need to see that paperwork. Piss off. You don't need to see any paperwork. Because whether I have it or not, you have no authority. That's it. They are not the cops. They are not the ATF. They piss off. Now, if you're at a range and you're using a SBR, you're using whatever it is, and somebody comes over and they identify themselves as an ATF agent, show you a badge and all that stuff, and they ask to see your paperwork, and they are, like, in uniform or whatever, yeah, you're supposed to have your paperwork with you. So, there you go. You don't want to get hemmed up for some bullshit technicality. So, if you have SBRs, make sure you always have your paperwork with you. All right? Moving forward to the future. There really isn't one. The time of this is over. And as for simple things like that, the, the grip. Um, now, you can have things that look like this, but they are fixed mags. All right? Mag is in there. It does not come out. Mine comes right out. New versions, can't have that. Same with like the Cali key and all that. All right. How do we load the new fixed mag ones, which listen, if you're buying the fixed mag ones, you got issues. I like to take my mags out. All right. But there is a little adapter that goes right in here and allows you to load your fixed magazine. All right, it literally looks like a plastic magazine that rocks in, and then you're able to jam the rounds in to your fixed mag. The reason I don't like them is when you're at the range, if for some reason there's a ceasefire, and you're in the middle of shooting, your mag is loaded, there's rounds in here, you can't just drop your mag and then clear it out. That's it. So if you just loaded that mag, you're going to sit there doing this till it's all empty. Nightmare. But that's how the fixed mags work. All right. The other type of gun that's out there, uh, it's from a company called Fight Light. All right. The lower is very, very similar to this. How it's different is this isn't there. Okay? It is cut differently. The stock and everything on it still has the buffer tube and all that stuff. Still has an unlock rail. But all of it, um, it, it looks like a regular long gun. As in, since there's no pistol grip on it, I mean, you're, you're literally holding it like that and shooting it. 
The magazine is still removable. You can have um, polymer furniture or some variants will have wood furniture. So if you're into that aesthetic, hey, good for you. That's some OG stuff right there. All right. You can buy them in several stores. I know Lock and Load in Southington has them. It's one of their biggest sellers now because, of, again, the magazine's removable. still shoots 5.56. It's still got Picatinny on it, M-Lock, the whole nine yards. So you're just not holding it with the pistol grip. All right? No vertical grip, things like that. They're pretty cool. Uh, again, it's a workaround. All right? That's what I like is... When they pass a law, the law-abiding citizen will comply with that law and will find a way around it to still get our pew-pew on. And there's nothing wrong with that. Versus the criminal who just disregards all the laws, does what they want anyways. So, so what changes does it really make? It just makes it harder for you, the law-abiding gun owner. To have your toys. Criminals don't give a shit. They're going to do what criminals do. So let's sum it all up. What did we really learn today? We learned that the difference between a pre-ban AR, the Connecticut other, NFA items like SBRs, and the modern day fight light. Function the same way, shoot the same round, and does nothing in between. As in, what I mean by nothing is they all function the same. It, it's all basically, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this, this is not legal advice, but they're all the same fucking gun. It's just the bullshit furniture you put on it, which makes no damn sense. And I'm not trying to give people ideas here, but if they were serious about certain things, they would go after functionality and not how it looks. All right. Well, we don't like this one. Why? Because it's black. All right. Well, we don't like this one because, you know, it's tan. It's, you know, it's like a military thing. Um, but we could put wood furniture on it and all of a sudden it's magically okay because it doesn't look scary. It doesn't look tactical. It doesn't look like the military uses it. And that's what they're, they're basing all their BS on. It's like, well, it's a military style. Listen. Knock, knock the bullshit off. Leave our guns alone. Get your damn dirty, grubby hands off my guns. No longer, madam. He is now in the custody of the Ministry of Science. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. All right? All your laws are unconstitutional. It's that simple. I am that much of a purist. Any law infringes on my rights, which is unconstitutional. If you want to change it so bad, change the Constitution. And good luck with that. That's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I mean, we're just covering ground that we already know. Where we were, where we're at today, where it's going in the future. If you're into this platform and you haven't gotten your hands on it, the best you're going to get is either a fixed magazine, a Cali key, or the fight light ranch gun. That's it. All right. These guns that have the pistol grips and the pre bands and we can't transfer them in this state. If I wanted to sell any of these, well, the SBRs are a nightmare to sell, but that being said, any regular AR, um, basically you got to sell them out of state or to a Leo or to an active duty military member. Or your other option is keep, so your options, keep it, turn it in and have it destroyed, which if you do that, you have all your cool guy points taken away from you, or sell it out of state. Now, the problem with selling it out of state is the value of it in Connecticut compared to a normal state, drastically different. You buy one of these originally, like my DLD. You're looking at, I think I got mine for like 1400 Toward the end, right before the law was being passed, they were up to eighteen to two grand, 1800 to 
Um, it's it's a thousand dollar gun anywhere else. If that, you go to Tennessee, you can pick up a a regular Colt AR, for like eight hundred bucks. Why? Supply and demand. Okay. When you go buy, let me move stuff out of the way. When you go to the store, I know there's humor in me. This is, and you buy one of these. This is a ten by thirty. All right. Pretend it's a a Magpul. I go to a local store and I buy a Magpul ten by thirty, about twenty five bucks. You go to Tennessee and you get a Magpul thirty by thirty, like ten bucks. Sometimes they have specials on Black Friday where you're getting them for six bucks a magazine, which. One of my buddies told me about, and I was like, well, I live in Connecticut, can't have them, sorry. It all comes down to supply and demand, right? We're limited here, so prices go up there, Tennessee, Florida, and tons of other states. You can have whatever you want, so it really doesn't matter, and the prices are based on that, all right? They're competitive priced. Or competitively priced. So, all right, that's all I have for you guys. I hope I taught you a little something. Um, hit up the comments below. Let me know what you guys have done with yours. If you lost them fishing, if aliens abducted them, or if you plead the fifth, because that's the end of it. Um, hate to say this, but instead of Connecticut knows what you have, and if you've logged into your portal. You understand Connecticut is basically built a registry. So all your stuff's in there. There's no, like, I lost it fishing. It was abducted by aliens and it left. Um, we're so hosed in this state. All right, guys. I will see you guys in the next video.